Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to discuss unexpected. All these teen hoes. We got some babies on the way. We got some Uh preeclampsia. We've got some danger girl. Yeah. Now, before we get into it, we do have to issue you a disclaimer. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We have stupid opinions and we're not going to apologize for them. So if you're somebody else, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down to party with some teenage pregnant hoes, welcome to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you are down to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, <gasps> patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at, okay? And it is the best way to support us if you want us to keep making content. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us to grow. And we thank you. Thank you. In advance. So Beatrice, how about those debates? Girl. (laughs) This is not a political podcast. No. But you don't have to be partisan in any way. I mean, we're all here in America. Most of us are here in America. We all watch that, right? (laughs) Was that hilarious? I was texting with my brother and he's like, I forget where I was. I was out somewhere. Yeah. And he's like, are you watching this horseshit right now? (laughs) I was like, I'm absolutely not watching. Is it all right? Is it good? He's like... It's not good. It's bad. It's a it's dark day for our country. It's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. We are living in clown world. I know. It's appropriate, I think, that we're in a dumpster. Yes. Observing it all. The memes were fire, though. They were- <laughs> After the debate, I mean, it was hilarious. It was just like, wow. Amazing. This is better than reality television. I mean, tr- it's real television. Yeah, it's reality. With the- Oh my god! It's crazy. People, I can't. Wow. This is wow. A, this is an interesting year, twenty twenty four. Yeah, we're in it together, raccoons. We are. All right, let's talk unexpected. We just watched this together, we you and I. Dead because I have the day off today. That's it's so right. Great when this happens. Enjoying it. it we're so hanging out. We'll kick us off. All right. Well, let's start with Anaya and Day Day. Honey, girl. Honey, Anaya's mom. What's her name? Uh, Ashley. Stacey, Ashley. She's the worst. I was triggered. She was the worst. I don't understand. I mean, how can you look at your kid who's saying, I feel unwell. I and feel really looks sick. looks unwell. She looks terrible. And you say, you're being dramatic. I mean, where's the maternal instinct? She ain't got none. She doesn't care. No. She sits in every single scene with her stink ass mm-hmm. face, just upset at the world for whatever reason, but taking it out on her daughter, who is clearly ill, yep. who has a history of high blood pressure, preeclampsia, mm-hmm. who does not look good. And at you're just all. like, um, I can't be arsed to drive her to the hospital because it's far away. This is my only day my off. Only I day work off. hard. I work over 40 hours a week. I'm like... Jesus Christ, what I mean, are they watching? Seriously, like I get it. You're tired. You're working a lot. But you have a daughter who's pregnant. She's about to burst. She's about to have this baby. Heavy with, Heavy child. with child. And you're not going to like take any kind of concern. They call her aunt, Anaya's aunt, who's 24. Right. And it's like, yeah, you should go to the hospital. Duh. And Ashley's like, I'm going to sit here and wait. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wait for something bad to happen. And, and calls then I'll her go. dramatic. Oh, my God. Absolutely and wild. And so Day Day is the one who ends up taking Anaya to the hospital. And he's got to, at some point, carry her into the hospital because she's crying. She's in terrible pain. Yep. They finally get into the hospital. They wheel her into a room, and she's going to need to be induced. Yep. So now we're going to have to call Ashley, her mother, and Ashley's like, yeah, what's going on? What's happening? And the doctor or the nurse says, yeah, well, we have to induce her. And she's like, okay, well, I guess I better haul my ass down to the hospital, which is what you should have done in the first place. Can somebody please tell me? out there that this woman is getting dragged on social media because I'm not up on social media like that but is she getting dragged because she needs to be dragged for being a piss poor mother I mean she is absolutely horrible it's like wild to me and even when she's talking to the nurse she's got an attitude and she's like well can you just wait do you have to induce her why can't you just wait and the nurse is like there's literally no benefit your daughter's freaking blood pressure is 160 over 74 we need to just do this now 
And Anaya on the couch, as she's recounting this, is like, yeah, if it's preeclampsia, there's like a risk of death. And her mom calls her dramatic again Mm -hmm. on the couch. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Also, Anaya tested positive for COVID, too. So she's got COVID. We saw that in the preview. So her mom's calling her dramatic while she's got COVID and she's got preeclampsia. So I'm wondering when this was actually filmed, because I know that like the copyright date was 2023 for the show, Mm -hmm. although we're in 2024, obviously. But I'm wondering if this was filmed in 2021 or 2022, because she's wearing her COVID mask. Mm -hmm. COVID's a big deal. And we find out because we were watching the preview for the rest of the season because we are on TLC Instagram. And we were we found out that Ashley, I always <laughs> forget her name. Ashley kicks Day Day out of the birthing room. Yes, so he gets to miss his yep. son's birth mm-hmm. because Ashley's mom doesn't like her, like him. Which or is wild. If it's COVID time, maybe only one person can be there so in the. It's just the room. Mom. I don't know. We're gonna have to see why he gets removed. <sighs> but I'm just like this woman. Everything about her is terrible. I feel awful for Anaya. I feel bad for Day Day. And also in the preview for the rest of the season, we see that Day Day is going to, I guess, enlist in the Air Force, mm-hmm. and he's going to leave, and he's going to bounce. I mean, it sounds like, well, that's how Anaya's framing it because her mom is probably saying that right. to her. Like, oh, Day Day's going to be a shit father because all men are bar- terrible. All men are going to walk out on you. Like, she's probably telling her that. Meanwhile, Day Day on the couch is like, I don't want to be a deadbeat because my dad was a deadbeat and I would feel immense regret if I did that. And I, I want to believe him. Yes. I hope that he does that. He but shouldn't he's a be child. a deadbeat. I mean, exactly. he, he's doing the very best that he can. And it's like in so many of these different scenarios, with these different teen mothers, their parents, and especially their mothers, are looking through the filter of their own trauma yep. and trying to get their daughters to make these decisions based on the shit that they didn't do in their own lives. Yep. And you can see it with Ashley. You can see it with Kaylee's mom, Mandy. You can see it with... Lily's mom. Lily's mom. Oh, oh my gosh, she's probably the worst. She's terrible. Trying to force their opinions on these kids that they already fucked up because they weren't good parents in the first place. Right. Ashley. I mean, let them make their own mistakes. Even if you think it's a mistake, let them fucking do it. When I got married to your daughter, my biological father, who was a deadbeat and is a deadbeat, tried to message me and be like, oh, you're making the biggest mistake. You're so young, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, first of all, I'm a whole ass adult. Let me make my own choice. And Second of all, who are you? Exactly. I mean, who and where are you? You weren't even a part of my life. So shut the fuck up. Uh, mm-hmm. I, but I hate that kind of stuff. It's like, just let your kid make the mistake and right. then they'll learn from it. That's what they're supposed to do. Right. You don't need to be telling them what to do and how to live their lives just because you fucked your own life up. Right. What makes you an authority after you fucking trashed your own timeline to come in on this kid's timeline and tell them how to live their life according to you? Exactly. Who trashed your own timeline? timeline exactly anyway all these mothers can get it from me today oh they're all terrible starting with ashley she's the worst she's so mean she's willing to sit on her ass and watch her daughter be in pain and suffering yeah instead of taking her to the hospital where she needs to be because she could die and this baby could die as well yes it's wild to me. I just couldn't believe that. And then she's going to show up acting all worried in the delivery room and she's going to act like she's she actually cares. She's going she to start doesn't. taking control as yes. well and telling everybody what to do. Yep, 100%. Oh, I do not like her. I do not like her either. I do not prefer her. Me neither. And then we have Kaylee and Graham. Right. And they're mm. setting up for her baby shower. Becky. Becky. Graham's mother. Meth mom. Becky. So if you recall last week, um, they were talking about the baby shower for Kaylee and they were wondering whether Graham, the dad, and his mother, Becky, were going to show up to the baby shower, much less to help set it up and to break it down. But of course, the night that they were supposed to join them, the night before the baby shower, Graham and Becky don't show up because Becky's sick. And apparently, Graham's always sick. Uh-huh. And Becky's always sick. Yep. And Graham's like, well, we couldn't come to help you set up the baby shower because my mom was in the hospital. And then on the couch, when Becky's talking about her sick it's actually bipolar uh-huh. and she's like you know I get really anxious I spend a lot of time in my bed so it doesn't even sound like she went to the hospital no she was coming down off of something off of meth. I really think so I mean really because she's got the look yeah 100% and I mean I have family 
who has bipolar, like actual bipolar. I see what it does to people. I'm not saying she doesn't have it or whatever, but like I have family that have bipolar, they have kids and they show up and they still do things and they try their best, even when they're having their really low Mm -hmm. moments or their really manic moments. But I'm like, Becky, you on drugs, bitch. Something's going on. You ain't doing shit. And she expects to be in the delivery room. (sighs) Girl. Uh, This was news to me. We heard it in this episode. Mandy's talking about how Becky's never there. Becky's never facilitating the kids getting together or having Graham show up at the appointments. Becky's not doing dick, not Mm -hmm. doing shit, but she wants to be there when the baby comes into the world. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? A birth is not a spectator sport. No. Just because you're related to the woman having the baby doesn't mean you get to be in the delivery room. For real. Kick all they asses Oh no, that's my coochie. Yeah. You don't need to be seeing this. This is shit. my cooter cat. It belongs to me. <laughs> and if I don't even want the father in there, he's not going to be in there. This is a medical procedure happening to my body. Exactly. And you and your bum ass 42 year old grandma bullshit can get the fuck on. I know. Oh, she triggers me too. All these mothers. They're terrible. Are triggering to me. They're really freaking terrible. And then she's talking about how she wants the baby to know her and she wants to be the grandma. And I'm like, And she wants the baby to be able to come over to her house without Kaylee there. I know, which is wild. I would never trust my kid to be with you. Meth mom. No. And poor Graham. Like, I mean, with Graham, I can understand him being sick. Like, in terms of his stress and, like, being upset. He's 15. He's a child. And he can't drive himself. So, like, I get it. But, like, Becky, you're the adult. Mm -hmm. Be mature drive your son over to see his baby mama like it's not that hard she's in bed the entire time hi but then we were listening to mandy who's kaylee's mother talk about all that she has done to facilitate the relationship between graham and kaylee and she talks about how she would drive over to graham's to get graham bring graham back to her house but she was also the one i imagine taking kaylee over to graham's house totally yeah which is where kaylee ultimately got pregnant yep because we heard becky say last week that you know she wasn't there because she's working and she'd come home and she'd find Kaylee there and they were obviously they were getting it on and that's because Mandy delivered her yep like a gift to Graham's house (laughs) pretty much yeah all of these people suck so deeply and terribly they're really terrible and like Mandy I get that you're frustrated that you have to do all this stuff but I'm like (laughs) your your 15 year old daughter is pregnant and like how about we talk about your irresponsibility as a parent as well right And there's the scene with Kaylee and Mandy, again, Mandy, her mother, and Kaylee's driving them to to the the Lions Club so that they can set up. And she's just bitching at her mom. And at some point, she's like, is there anything else you want to say to me? I know. I'm just like, I wish my daughter would have tried. The teenage I wish my daughter would have tried talking to me (laughs) the way that Kaylee feels so free to talk to her mother. And Mandy just takes it. She doesn't say, stop the goddamn car. Give me these keys. These are, this is no longer your car. If you don't like it, you can walk to, I was mad. (laughs) I know. I'm like, this girl is just reading Mandy. And Mandy's letting her. So Mandy, you get what you settle for. If you're going to allow your kids to do this, well, now you got a kid with a kid. Uh You got a 60-year-old husband. (laughs) You're terribly unhappy. And you got Becky walking all over you. Right. This is the life that you're creating for yourself. Everything is just you pushed out, Mandy. 100%. Read her to filth. Well, and that's the thing. Mandy was like, I feel like it's unfair the way Kaylee treats me because I take all of the brunt when she should direct it towards Graham and his mom, Becky. And I'm like, oh. Okay, then give her a a consequence, a repercussion. I mean, be a mom. Teach her how to be a person in the world. All she does is spoil the fuck out of her. What are you doing? How do you think Kaylee's going to be in 10 years? (laughs) What kind of parent do you think Kaylee's going to be if you continue to spoil her like this? She's not going to be a good one. I can tell you that. No. At all. And then they actually get everything set up for the baby shower and people start arriving. And of course, Graham and Becky show up late. They show up after everything's been set up. Right. So they don't have to do any of the work. And Becky tries to be all super friendly with Kaylee, like they're best friends. And Kaylee's like, this is weird because she's never like this. Mm -mm. So it's all for show because the cameras are there and Mandy's there. So she has to pretend like she cares. And they show up for like... 10 minutes mm-hmm. and then leave yep don't help them to clean up mm. don't help them to break down Mm-mm. in and out i would be so pissed yeah but you really can't 
blame Graham because once again, he's, he's a, a child, child yep. and he's under the influence of his parental figure, Meth Becky. Mom. And this is how Becky is teaching him to show up in a co-parenting relationship. So yep. he thinks this is okay because this is how Becky shows up in her parenting relationship. She spends all of her time in her room, sleeping or anxious or yelling Hi. because I'm telling you right now, she looks mean to me. Oh, totally. She's probably screaming and yelling. And when you look at Graham's affect, the way he carries himself, that that's an anxious kid. Yep. That's a kid that's been traumatized. I wonder where that comes from. Well, Becky. Meth mom. That's where it comes from. 100%. Mm -hmm. And so Mandy and Kaylee don't feel like Graham and Becky are going to be involved really at all once the baby's born. They're not. They're not going to. But she wants to be in the delivery room. Of course. Just to say that she was there, but then she'll never be involved. And mm -mm. then she'll take pictures and she'll show it to her friends. Look at my grandbaby mm -hmm. that doesn't even know my name. Right. Because she's high on meth all the time. Right. In her <laughs> she's bedroom. She's the worst. And then last but not least, we have Lily and Lawrence, who are kind of a boring couple, but it's Christmas Day for them. And they got all these toys for their kids. And their kids right. are super happy. And we were talking about that. And yeah. I was just telling you, like, that is the most precious and beautiful experience when your little ones when they're like three four five six seven when they're little yeah. and they wake up at like four in the morning and they can't wait to get to the presents under the tree and they come into your bedroom and they wake you up and you are up you know until two in the morning wrapping those presents and having whiskey and stuff yeah. so you're tired you're hungover but it's such a beautiful experience to like take those little ones to the tree and open the I presents know. but Lawrence wasn't feeling it no Lawrence is like can I go back to bed I'm like this is this is the these are the best moments of your life oh and these are the best years ever yes. because the kids have the most magic and the most yes. fun because they believe the in they santa get, yes they have the little footprints for yes. santa i love that so much and once they get older they're not going to give a shit no they're gonna be like give me money yeah don't wake me up give me a new xbox or a playstation oh you're gonna be paying so much money for that christmas but like when they're little everything's cheaper yeah. they're happy with everything and they're stalking they're so much they're fun. just so lovely but that's the thing about life like when you're that young and you're so harried and the kids are screaming and running around you don't really have the wherewithal to understand that these are the most beautiful moments in your life yeah not until you're my age some old lady <laughs> looking back thinking to yourself I would give anything to go back. literally anything to go back to when my daughter was three years old Aww. and it was Christmas morning I'm like oh my god if I could just experience that with yeah. new eyes I would cherish it every moment yes yeah and like Lily for the most part is trying her best like she's talking about how she grew up super poor like us mm -hmm. and how she didn't get anything for Christmas. And so she went all out. I mean, she had so many fucking gifts there for her kids and everything. And it was weird, though, that she spent all this money and like didn't talk to Lawrence about it. Yeah. And we recall last week he was kind of complaining about it because yeah. he was just learning that she had spent, I guess, over budget for the Christmas presents. And she was just like, well, it's Christmas. Yeah. It's one time a year. I'm it's the go most crazy. special, magical time of the year. And Lawrence doesn't really have any say yeah. in that. And I was like, what's going on with that? Why do you feel like you can just go out and buy whatever you want and not talk to your husband about it? Yeah, I don't really like that. Like, I understand you want to go crazy and you want to give your kids a good experience. So that's fine. But like, maybe agree upon a budget and go from there. Especially when you have a wedding date mm -hmm. set in three months and you want to spend $20,000, girl. Right. Well, that's she wants crazy. to spend 30000 and Lawrence is putting his foot down and saying it's going to be 20000 But like... How's anybody going to raise in this economy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> $20,000, of extra money in three months. I don't understand it. But you, you could also tell with Lawrence that he didn't know about any of the presents that mm -hmm. she bought. He didn't participate in any of the purchasing of the presents. Yeah. And he was kind of just checked out. But... We have to give him props. He is a young man. Yep. He is taking care of Lily's first daughter, Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. He's taking care of his son. He's working hard and he's showing up on Christmas. And so that's wonderful. Yeah. And he kind of reminds me a little bit of how my dad was when I was a kid because my dad was working swing shift all the time. And he was always kind of like 
reserved, kind of quiet. And I look back on it now and I'm like, he was tired. Yeah, <laughs> He was working a lot and he was like trying to make ends meet for us. And we still had, you know, good Christmases as kids. So it's like, I kind of look at Lawrence in that light. Yeah. Lily's kind of being critical of him. Like he's not helping out with like picking up after all the kids is mess, after opening all the presents and stuff like that. I'm like, well, maybe he's just tired, tired. and stressed and it's a lot of money. Yes. Like, maybe let's give him a little bit of grace. And then later that day, Lily's parents show up and Lawrence's mom shows up because they're going to have Christmas dinner there. Mm -hmm. And Lily's meth dad shows up with his no teeth. <laughs> Missing some teeth, but like he's been sober, sounds like for a little while. Like a year, maybe. I was hoping that we had some sobriety spanning some years, but apparently Lily had taken both of her kids over to see him. Last winter. LJ is only like two. So Something like that. Last winter. Yeah. And he was piss drunk drunk didn't know who he was he was completely out of it and apparently he went to rehab since then so mm -hmm. now he's showing up for christmas but like mm. well and lily's not like super hopeful about it because i guess that's what he does like he'll get clean for a little while and then he'll go back to it and judging by those teeth i'm sure he's gonna go back to oh it. my god so judgy i mean I'm where do gonna... you get that from i don't even know listen i grew up in meth town oregon <laughs> i'm allowed to judge okay? you can clock it i can well the biggest thing that's happening though in this scene is that Lily is preparing to tell everybody including um, Lawrence's mother mm -hmm. whom I love uh, she's great I thought she was fantastic yes um, that they're getting married in three months time and she knows that her mother has some ancient trauma and is looking through the filter of her own bullshit <sighs> her mom who is still not divorced from her methed out dad even though she left him like 15 years ago and has been with this other guy for the entire time who's treating her well yep. and continuously proposes to her but she keeps saying no because it's too expensive Expensive Which is a load to of get shit. divorced, and I've been divorced seventeen thousand times, I and I can tell you right now, if it's amicable, um, it's not expensive, not at all, it's hardly anything. You can get a mediator; you don't even need a lawyer. But I digress. So Lily's nervous, and she's also tired of her mom's bullshit because anytime Lily tells her the mom what she wants to do, the mom comes here. She comes on her bullshit, talking about what. Lily needs to be doing mm -hmm. and how marriage is bad and it's really expensive when it doesn't work and shut up Lily's mom I mean just let them get married again like I said let the kids make their own fucking mistakes it's not your life like let them do it plus what was it Lawrence's mom she's like it makes sense to me I'm super excited we'll throw a dope party mm -hmm. it's gonna be great like you guys should get married because you guys have been living together since you were 19 like might as well it's right. just a piece of paper. Yeah, and Lawrence has been here the entire time taking care of Lily and all of these children. Yes. And so they should be married and get the benefit of that because there are benefits, tax benefits yep. and health benefits and otherwise. And so, yeah, get married. And just because it didn't work for you, Lily's mom, doesn't mean it's not going to work for Lily, which Lily tries to tell her in the yep. kitchen. She's like, I'm already in a better position than you were at my age, uh -huh. even though you had a baby when you were 16, like I had a baby when I was 16. Like Lawrence is sticking around. Yeah. We have a home. We have kids. We're yep. making it work. You didn't do that. Right. Don't take that shit out on me. Exactly. But her mother cannot help herself. No, she can't. And we even see it in the preview when like Lily's trying to get all of the wedding plan stuff getting going. She's like getting a little overwhelmed. And her mom's like, yeah, see, I told you so. It's overwhelming. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, fuck off. And man. I was telling you, like, we again, we were watching this together. I'm like, my mother-in-law from my second marriage, oh. she was the most wonderful, saintly person. Um, she wasn't saintly, but she was just so fantastic yeah. and for example when I got really sick after I had my child your wife I went into a coma I was in the hospital for like on and off for months like she flew up to Illinois to Chicago she took care of my daughter she was there for me but like she never imposed like her ways on me she yeah. never told me how to be a parent like when we made major decisions that I'm sure she ne didn't necessarily like she never told us that she only ever supported us yeah juxtapose that with my own mother may she rest in peace who I love absolutely but like when I gave birth and I got really sick I couldn't nurse for obvious reasons like 
I'm in an actual coma, mom. And she's like, but you can still nurse. <laughs> and I'm in the actual hospital being narcotized nonstop 24 seven. Well, you could still nurse, you could pump and nurse. I'm like, I literally no. can't do that. And she was like La Leche League on steroids, yeah. making me feel so bad because the milk wasn't coming. I was sick. And she was on the phone every single day, guilting me about actually nursing and then my mother-in-law she's like i raised all five of my kids on formula we got doctors we got nurses like we've it's got gonna be lawyers fine. like it's going to be all right and i'm just like thank you yeah and ever since then i always told myself that's the kind of mom-in-law i'm going to be yeah or the mother i'm going to be i'm just gonna be like you guys go and do your own thing have your kids parent them the way that you want to even yeah. if i don't agree yeah like do whatever the fuck you want i'm just here to support you and be there for you when you need me and spoil the kids and spoil the kids yeah and do that but i'm never gonna step on your toes if you tell you me better. no sugar though like well, i'm not gonna sneak it no, when you I'm leave not gonna do that. you know on your date night i'm not gonna give the kids sugar i'm not gonna be that kind of grandparent oh yeah I'm just, you can give them sugar no but i mean but if you said something oh, yeah. that i shouldn't do like i'm going to listen to you like that's why lily's mother bothers me so much you're just going to estrange yourself from her entire family exactly that's the thing and it's like i can understand it from like the meta perspective if i zoom out and i'm like i get where you're coming from lily's mom i understand that you're trying to like be a parent and just be like no please don't make the same mistakes and like let me try and rectify it through you like in my own way or whatever i understand it but stop there's like a com there's a certain mm -hmm. point in time where like you have to let go as a parent as a grandparent yes. and just be like okay it is what it is I'm old as fuck right I'm in my sixties let me just whatever let me just she's be the cool grandma she's only fifty two yo oh I thought she was in her sixties no oh my god she looks terrible that's why I'm like she's most Ooh. but like for example when you got married okay yeah the first time I got married I was eighteen years old yeah you were a baby I stayed married for eight years which is a long time actually yeah. <laughs> but I was very young and it was never going to work out and so when my daughter tells me she's going to marry you and y'all are 19 slash 20. I'm thinking to myself, well, should I tell them about my own personal experience? Should I give my opinion? Absolutely not. Yeah. I supported you. I became an efficient so I could marry you. Yeah. And that is like how I feel parents should be. Like yeah. if, if for some reason something doesn't work out, like I'm going to be there then too. Right. I'm going to be there for the whole fucking thing right. supporting you. That's what parents do. Like, well, you, no, a lot of parents don't. Well, no, I mean, that's what parents should do. That is what, what they I should mean. do. Yes. But a lot of parents are just like, whatever, fuck you. Like I told you not to do it. Right. And Which is why you ended up not telling some of your family too, right? I didn't tell any of my family. Right, because you knew married. they were going to be like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, they would have talked me out of it 100%. Mm -hmm. And I was too stubborn. I'm like, no, I'm going to do it anyway. Right. Fuck off. And so then I told everybody via Facebook. <laughs> After the fact. <laughs> After the fact. I'm like, oh, right. yeah, we got married a couple of months ago. And most of them were supportive. And some of them were a little bitter about it. But I'm like, you know. It is what it is. It's I'm, your life. It's my life. You and can I do knew, what you want. I knew none of them were going to approve. So right. I'm like, I'm just going to do it anyway. And look at you now, like eight years later, the success story that Hello. you are making it all work. We and still love I each love other. that for you. Yes, you do. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. Just because it didn't work for you doesn't mean it can't work for somebody else, which yep. is what Lily is trying to tell her mother. But her yep. mother doesn't want to hear it. Her nope. mother is still on her bullshit about divorce being super expensive. Like, I can't believe that, is so that the bio father, toothless, toothless and homeless, <laughs> the toothless, not homeless. That's dead. Is sitting, that's from Beverly Hills oh. Housewives. <laughs> um, but he's sitting there with the guy who wants to marry the wife. And they're all talking about it as if it's so normal, as if it's so expensive to divorce like what does meth dad have no exactly what kind of property is he gonna have to split that's with what i'm saying 60 year old 52 year old mom <laughs> seriously i'm like it'd be one thing if like you guys were both really rich and it'd be super expensive to like go through all of your stuff or whatever and get a lawyer and all that but no He's literally an alcoholic and a He's drug addict. literally put it all up his nose. <laughs> I mean, and he has the audacity at the Christmas dinner table to say it's cheaper to keep her. I know. Like you're not keeping anybody. This other cool guy who raised your children is the one who's taking care of everything. I don't understand. I it could never be me. Beatrice. I hope she's getting ripped to shreds online. And everybody's like, it's literally so cheap to get divorced my parents were broke as shit and got divorced on their own and it was fine and it was not amicable at all mm. like they were fighting and they were going through custody battles and all this bullshit but they still got divorced even though we were broke as hell yeah so like 
I don't know. I it's an excuse it. and I, I don't understand it. I don't I don't know why. And it's like a weird curse that you keep putting on your child, like trying to frighten her about yeah. the institution of marriage and that this shit never works. It's like, well, you're starting to predispose her to have a terrible marriage. Like, why are you doing this from your own traumatic space? Like, just get divorced. And then if you don't want to get married again because you don't want to deal with the legality, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know where they're living. It's common law exists for them and it exists in texas right so it's like it it does it can happen but i don't know they're just a weird fucking family man everybody's weird on this whole show it's super weird and the parents are so infuriating yes because they act like they're so smart and so mature and they're all pieces of shit Mm -hmm. (laughs) they all suck Mm -hmm. and then we have the preview for the rest of the season and lily's like overwhelmed with all the wedding stuff obviously because it's a three-month wedding and you want to plan a twenty thousand dollar wedding in that time when you i mean what is lawrence doing for work actually though like i mean god bless it he's working really hard but he's a young man i'm sure he's not pulling down six figures maybe he is but i'm just like it's gonna take a lot for this young man to raise that kind of money since you're not working lily that's why he's stressed out of the house that is because you work in the house exactly and then we have graham who's also stressed and he's fighting with kaylee i don't know if he stayed the night at her house or what but he's like i'm just stressed and he starts crying every time i come over here it's so stressful i'm like life is stressful you have a child that's coming graham this is gonna be the rest of your life unless you bounce which let's face it he's totally going to bounce totally going to and i hope kaylee will fight to get child support at least yeah i mean he's working he's only 15 or 16 year old it's not like she's gonna get a ton of child support but put that shit on the books yep set a precedent yep and then if he doesn't pay you can come back in for arrears when he's 24 years old honey you can get all that money then exactly all these kids need to be putting these young men on child support they really you stick it in you're gonna have to pay Yes, ma'am. And then we also have Emily crying because she's still pregnant and Nate's just sitting there silent, not doing anything. But she's also being dramatic. Well, and you can tell because he's being quiet and he's so closed down that this is the kind of shit she does all the time and he's over it. Yep. He's hit his limit with Emily and her crying and her bullshit. Yep. And we also saw a clip on TLC's Instagram page. She apparently moves out of Taryn's house and back in with her father because it was too terrible. <laughs> yeah. And I <laughs> Which guess we called it Taryn and her were coming to conflict. Right. Yeah. They were having problems. And together. Nate's pretty sad about it because he's like, these are the two most important people in my life and they can't get along. And I'm like, again, you shouldn't have put your pee pee in her. Hoo-ha. But he's a child. The parents need to show up and provide some sexual education. Yeah. Yep. It's all just a shit show, which is why we watch it. That's why we love this it. This is why we watch it. It's pretty crazy. It is. All these people are nuts. And they that's are. The, that's but the we, end. we got some babies coming. I know. Anaya's about to give birth to Anias. I know. And we'll see how that goes. Oh, my God. That stink-ass grandmother. That mom is going to piss me off. I'm sorry, auntie, because she doesn't want to be called right. grandmother. Because she's too young for that. Yeah. Okay, Girl. lady. Whatever. Well, do we have anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get the hell out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go onto your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review it really helps us grow the pod and we really appreciate it thank you very much we will also be back later this week to talk sister wives rewind because remember sister wives are coming back is what we hear in august in august of 2024 yeah. so this is the run-up to the most magical time of our year it's, it's our christmas is yes when sister wives and welcome to plathville come back so come back later this week and we'll be talking about sister wives and until then please do not forget that we have nothing about love for you and peace out bye bye guys <laughs>